We've covered Sublime's ability to execute any external program and capture its output for display in a panel at the bottom of the window, and how if you want to run something interactive, you can do that by using Terminus, which embeds a terminal directly inside of your Sublime Text window. Sometimes, though, there's just no substitute for running a program in an actual external terminal. And while you can open such a terminal yourself manually and swap between it, we can uh, make Sublime open such a window for us when and if we need it. And in a previous lesson, we covered how to do something like this if you're running Windows. In today's video, we're going to show you how to do the exact same thing if you're running Linux. Hey, hello, fellow Sublime Text fanatics. Odan Nerd here. Welcome back to another Sublime Text tutorial video, the topic of which is executing builds in external terminals, the Linux edition. Now, we have covered uh, in previous videos on the channel the idea of build systems and how they allow you to execute any sort of arbitrary external program that you like. Build systems will capture the output of an executed program and display it in a panel at the bottom of the window. However, it is purely output, no input, so you can't interact with such a program, and it is just a straight dump of the output output with no terminal emulation done. So if you're running something that wants to display colors or wants to move the cursor around throughout the display, that's not something that is a good fit for a standard build system. However, the Terminus package implements a terminal that embeds itself directly inside of Sublime. It is cross-platform Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, freely available, and it is very easy to use it as a terminal and as a build system. Now, you would do something like that if you want to execute an in interactive program or something that needs color display and cursor movement and things of that nature. Aside of those things, if you need to run something of that nature that is interactive or would otherwise benefit from being in an actual terminal and not just a simple output dump, then you'd need to do something like open a, an appropriate terminal for your operating system or command prompt, depending on the uh, platform that you happen to be on, and to run your program from inside of there. And a lot of people do that and only that to execute their code. I've done that myself quite a bit. And uh, sometimes, though, maybe you want to have Sublime open that terminal for you when you happen to need it or have, have it set up so that you hit a key, it opens up in the terminal, runs your program. When your program's done, the window closes, you go immediately back to Sublime. And that is what we're going to cover here, the recipe that you would use to take a build system and convert it to be able to do something like this. Now, in order for this to work, you need to know a little bit about build systems and how they work. And that whole topic, build systems, how they work, how to set them up, how to use the Terminus package to convert a build and just the Terminus package in general, those are all things we've covered on the channel before. Links are down in the description, so if any of that sounds intriguing, you need a little refresher, you're not quite sure what we're talking about with any of that stuff, that is the place to check out. Now, when it comes to this particular recipe, we're going to be doing this in Linux. Specifically, I'm using Slackware Linux myself, but this should work across any Linux distribution that you happen to have. If you're a Windows user, there's a video on the channel where we did this exact same thing, and we'll be referencing it here. As a matter of fact, there's a link to that down in the description below as well. You can skid on over there and figure out how to do this very thing. Now, if you're on Mac OS user, as of the time of this recording, that is not out on the channel yet, but it is upcoming. So if you're interested in that and you'd like to know how to do it and you haven't already availed yourself of the buttons down below for subscribing and bell notifications and things of that nature, now might be a great time to do that to make sure you don't miss out on that particular video. Now, normally, as we can see, I am in a Windows environment for something like this, but in order to demonstrate how to do this under Linux, we probably uh, should be on uh, a Linux desktop. So let's go ahead and switch the background behind me to a Linux desktop. Corny? Probably. Uh, so here we are in Sublime Text running under Linux, and let's have a sample build system I set up. Now, if you watch the video that we did on how to do this very thing in Windows, this is a basically a Linux interpretation of that same thing. We have here just a simple build system that uses the ls command to display the contents of my packages folder, um, and that's just so that no matter where you are under Linux, this is something that's going to be available to absolutely everybody. And the same concepts generally apply here as did under Windows as well. Here, the packages uh, variable is going to expand out to be the name of my packages folder, and it is wrapped in double quotes because although it, right now it's not a path that contains spaces, it's 
theoretically possible that that might be the case uh, if you happen to run this on a different operating system, perhaps, say, for example, Mac OS. Um, and so for that reason, the file name has double quotes wrapped around it, and those have to be backslash because double quotes are special inside of JSON. This is all stuff we have covered before. And if I was to execute this particular build, which I've set to be the build for the system, we can see it down there in the bottom of the window. It is displaying the output, of the contents of my home directory, and it took eight milliseconds to do that very thing. Now, let's say we actually wanted to display this in an external terminal window. Well, there are theoretically many ways to pull something like this off because it's going to depend on the Linux distribution that you're on. Again, I'm on Slackware right now and also on the window environment you happen to use in your Linux distribution. Right now I'm using XFCE. Um, but one thing that should be available to everybody under Linux is Xterm, the standard Xterm terminal. That is the program that you would use to open a new console window or a new terminal window or a new command prop window, however you refer to that. I refer to those for uh, that as all of those different things. And when you run this particular command, you would give it an argument of minus E to tell it to execute something. And everything that follows that to the end of the command line is the program that should be executed inside of the Xterm window. So theoretically, that is all we need for this. But as we saw in the uh, Windows version of this, when I press the build key, it took 48 milliseconds, we can see down there for this build to run. So in 48 uh, thousandths of a second, it opened up an Xterm window, displayed the contents of my home directory in it, and then closed the window up. So all by and all, not necessarily the most useful of uh, operations that we might run here. If you were running a more long-term program or something that's interactive, and when you quit the program, you would do that by input and then the window would go away. That is, a, this is a great way to do something like that. If you were running something, say a command like this, where you wanted to actually know that, uh, see the actual output of it, uh, Xterm has an argument named hold that you can throw in here. Now it's important to note that the minus E argument has to be the last one on the command line because everything that follows it is going to be used as the command to execute. So we can specify minus hold in here. And now when I hit the key an Xterm opens and opened on the wrong desktop. So I'll just move that one on over here. And we can see here is an Xterm window that it opened up. Now what you see depends on the Linux distribution that you're on, but there is the output. Now, one potential problem with this is we can't interact with this. It finished executing and hold tells it to just hold the window open. So we have to manually use the mouse or hit a key binding in order to get that to go away. And what we could do instead of using minus hold is something that we saw in the uh, version of this where we did it on Windows, where we might say we want to display this and then after that, wait for a key press. And you would do that under Linux by using the read command. This is a built-in most of the time. And just like in the Windows version, because there's multiple things here, we need to wrap this inside of quotes like so. Whoops, I'll use the correct uh, quoting here. Because this is going to be one whole command that's passed along to be executed. The Linux equivalent of the single ampersand with, uh, on Windows, which tells it to run one command, then run the next command, is the semicolon. So this will run this command first, and then after it's done, execute the read command, which waits for you to press enter before it finishes. And because we removed the minus hold from here, when we run the build, again, and the uh, terminal opened on the wrong window here, but we can see it's right here. We can see a cursor blinking down there now because there's still something running. It's waiting for input, and when I press the key, it goes away. Now, what we might actually uh, want to do in this case is we can add in here a uh, minus P for prompt and then say press enter, for example. I'm going to use single quotes for that so that when we run the window, we can see there it says press enter to remind you what key it is that you actually want to be pressing. And much like, uh, again, under Windows, sometimes you want to run 
two commands back to back. The example we used in the Windows version of this is if you're doing something in C, you might want to compile your program into an executable and then run the executable. Or if you're using Java, you might want to compile the Java class and then run the Java class. And how do we pull something like that off? In the exact same way that we would if we were under Windows by using the two ampersands and then uh, another command. And again, here we're just going to say echo done here. And the double ampersand means the same thing here as it does under Windows, which is run the first command and then run the second command, but only if the first one succeeded. So if I was to run this, we can see it pops up right there and it says the output and it says done because it successfully displayed the contents of the folder and then it's asking me to push enter, I push the key and away it goes. If this was modified in some way to be a folder that doesn't exist, and this is extra nonsensical under Linux, but this is the same way I did it under uh, Windows. When we run the build, it gives an error that says that it can't access that particular directory. And then it tells me to press enter, but it doesn't specify the done. And this is something that, again, that you would do if you're doing something like ex compiling code and then executing it. You want to make sure that the second command only executes if the first one succeeded. Otherwise, you type a program in, it's wrong. You try to compile it. It doesn't compile, but it still runs the executable that was hanging around last time. And you spend a good long time trying to figure out why that is actually the case. And the last thing that we covered in that video was what if you wanted to run uh, in an external program in a terminal, in a console prompt, and, and actually keep it open for further input. Because as we've seen so far, it either closes right away, it closes when you close the window, or it closes after you press enter. What if you actually wanted to continue to type uh, into that window to execute other commands? And that is very easy to do. We're going to replace all of this with just this bash, or if you use a different shell, uh, you could type that in as well. Bash is a pretty common uh, shell to use. And this is telling it to execute first the ls command and then bash. And bash in this case will execute even if the first one fails because we use the semicolon and not the double ampersand. So when I push the key, we get the window and now I'm at a command prompt for my user package. And I could type the same command in manually if I wanted to. And then I have to manually close out of that window. As I mentioned previously, I'm using the uh, Slackware Linux distribution and the XFCE window manager. Your Linux distribution is likely different and your window manager is likely different as well. Now, different window managers tend to have their own window manager specific version of the terminal program that mimics the way the other applications in its suite work. And uh, my Linux distribution is um, no different in that regard. So you may find that although Xterm should be available for everybody no matter what Linux they're running, that the window that it opens may not look like what you normally expect something like that to look like. But fortunately, uh, although that is the case, the specific uh, terminal like GNOME terminal or what have you, um, or console with a K if you happen to be using KDE as your uh, windowing ma window managing system, um, they generally have their own terminal that behaves in the same way or has similar arguments to do the same thing as Xterm. So for example, if we stripped this all the way back to the original example that we had, where this was just running the LS program like so and nothing else, here I'm using XFCE. Um, so my terminal program is XFCE, oops, XFCE4 terminal, like so. And it has an argument of minus X instead of minus E, X for execute instead of E for execute. And it has the same argument we saw previously of hold, but it requires two dashes instead of one. But uh, all that being equal, if I was to use this as the build system, I get the terminal that I'm most uh, used to seeing. And if you've ever watched my live streams on my other channel, which is linked in the description below, and I do uh, once a week, you'll notice this is the terminal that I'm most used to. So it's very easy to get this working uh, exactly the way that you might want to or expect to see it working you know, in your everyday Linux usage.
As a recap of what we've just covered, sometimes we want to run our builds in an external window, and instead of doing it manually, we might want Sublime to do that for us. And we can very easily craft a build system that will open an external terminal and run our build inside of it. And we can set that build to run so that the window closes immediately when the program is finished, or we have to wait and manually close the window ourselves, or we can even set it to press a key to close the window. So no matter what it is we're trying to execute and how lengthy an operation it is, we have something at our fingertips. We use the Xterm program, which should be available across all Linux distributions, but if you happen to have a favorite terminal, for example, as we saw here, uh, XFCE4 terminal for the window manager that I personally use, if you look at the documentation for that, you should find that it has similar arguments to the hold and execute arguments that we saw here in the video. And if you're not a Linux user, but you're a Windows user and you'd like to know how to do this, there's a video for that already on the channel. It's linked down in the description. If if you're a Mac OS user, we haven't covered this yet, but we're going to cover it real soon. So if you'd like to know how to do this under Mac OS and you haven't already done so, you might want to use those buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share to make sure that you don't miss out on that great tutorial and other tutorials that we drop on the channel on a weekly basis. And until that next tutorial, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.